Hey guys, welcome. Today we are talking about successful sales pitches for travel agents. I love talking about sales. It's one of my favorite topics. I have a, a few superpowers. Marketing and sales is definitely one of them. We don't spend a lot of time on sales in this channel. Um, so I thought we would dedicate January to really helping you improve your sales and making the most out of every potential opportunity. So if you want to know the elements that need to go into a successful sales pitch in our industry, examples of sales closes that convert and how to make more sales, also how to make more money from each sale. So the same work, but increasing your ticket costs and overall making the sales process just easier overall, then keep on watching. By the way, guys, if you're new here, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. We create videos every single week that help you grow your travel businesses, great tips, advice, and all kinds of good stuff. So with that, let's get started. By the way, if you're new here, I want to say welcome. If you wouldn't mind, put the word new in the comments below. I would love, love, love to meet you. And if you're new here, you probably don't know me. My name is Cindy Williams. I started in the travel industry over 25 years ago. I own and operate my own award-winning, nationally recognized travel agency. And I'm also the CEO of Careers on Vacation, which helps people launch, grow, and supersize their travel businesses all over the world. And I have a passion for sharing uh, all the good things in our industry. So I'm so glad that you found us today. So today we're discussing successful travel agency sales pitch examples and how to make your sales process easier. How does, maybe you don't feel great about sales. Maybe you feel uncomfortable. Maybe you're great at planning trips, but you get to that place where you're about to, you know, ask for the sale and it doesn't, it doesn't connect for you or you're not converting at the level that you want to. So we're going to tackle some of those things today. So, um, the first thing I want to say is like, I hate the word sales pitch because sales should be more of a consultative process. And I'm going to dig into that here in a second. Um, but before we get into the content, I'm going to preface this video by making a couple of assumptions. I'm going to assume that you have that you've qualified your clients because we have other content out there about that, but you've qualified your clients, you understand their needs and that you know how to research and build travel proposals. Um, so by the way, if you, uh, are new to the industry or you're thinking about getting into the travel industry and you've come across this video, definitely go check out our masterclass, which is a totally free hour long session on is the travel industry right for you? And it talks about the different ways you can set up your business. Go to cruiseonvacation.com forward slash masterclass and that will help you out a lot. But if you already know how to build proposals, you know how to qualify clients and you know how to research and build trips, that's kind of an assumed thing on this video, right? So for you, already uh, in the industry travel agents. And by the way, for those of you who are already in the industry, what part of the sales process do you struggle with most? Because we're tackling this topic all month long, I really want to hear your comments because that will help me build the content out for the rest of these sales sessions that we'll be helping you with. So drop me a quick note on that too. All right, so assuming you, you have a client, you've qualified the client, you've built a proposal, what components go into that solid sales pitch, right? So I'm gonna stop calling it pitch because I hate that word. I know it's great for like if you were search terms on YouTube and you were looking for how do I come up with a sales pitch, but really good sales is just about matching your client's needs. That's what it is. Good salespeople really understand that you're simply meeting your client's needs. It's not a sleazy process. It's not a pushy process and it doesn't have to be an aggressive process process when sales is done right. And you connect with someone, understand what they want and you deliver it in a way that it shows them you met their needs then it's a sale and it's a win-win for both. So it's about taking a consultative approach, listening and matching. Okay. Consultative approach, listening and matching, and then how you give that proposal. I'm going to give you some great tips on. So let's talk about some really key components and maybe you're doing some of these today and maybe you're not. Um, but 
think about, and I'm gonna give you some pros and cons, but think about what you're doing today and where you struggle in the sales process. The biggest thing I see when clients come to me and they're experienced, and some of them, like normally we're always fixing marketing for people, like lead flow, getting them more leads, but some people have no problem getting leads. They're, they've figured marketing out and they're, they're getting lots of qualified leads, but they can't close the deal. Why can't they close the deal? One of the number one things that people do that is a huge mistake with new clients, when they're established, you can handle it a little bit differently, but when they're new is you just email them a quote and go, let me know what you think. Like, no, you've done all this work. That is not a proposal. Just emailing them and going, cause what happens? What happens when you email them everything? You do all the work, right? Two, three hours, this beautiful itinerary. Maybe it's a honeymoon. Maybe it's a, a FIT trip through Europe, whatever you've created, right? It took you time, energy to do that. Then you email them everything they need to then go to that company. And what do they do? They start price shopping. They start going to the internet. They start doing things because they think they know better, right? So emailing is not a good tool if you want to close at an exceptional rate and continue to build that bond and relationship with your client so stop emailing quotes oh let me replay that stop emailing quotes with new clients it's okay once they're established and you know they're not a tire kicker and you have a bond and relationship with them that can be different and yes you can email and have a little bit of a different strategy with your recurring clients that's fine but with newbies, you really have to set a different expectation to get them onboarded properly so you can really continue to build this recurring business model in your travel business. So what did I say? Stop emailing quotes, please. I promise that will be the number one, one of the number one things that helps you today. The other thing that you wanna do is think about the proposal that you're gonna give. Consider using video. I've been training video for like years, like five plus years we have been preaching about the effectiveness of video, not just in marketing, but also in the sales process. This is one of those things, especially this year, I feel like 2020 or last year now, yay, happy new year, by the way, aren't we all glad to be out of 2020? But last year, everybody woke up and all of a sudden they're like, oh, we gotta do video. We have to do business on video. I have to go to work on video. And the world changed and realized how important it was. Our clients that go through like our Cruise on Vacation Mastermind, we've been training this for years. So giving your proposal on video and closing it in that person, in the, the virtual person to person meeting is way more effective than emailing and then sitting and going, oh, I wonder when they're gonna reply, right? So think about using video in the sales process for your agency. The second thing you wanna do, especially if you're new to video, is go ahead and run through your presentation or your proposal as like a, like a dress rehearsal by yourself before you get on video. What I like to do is I like to have all of my screens pulled up. Like here's the three options I'm gonna give them. One, two, three, and then I know what I'm, the pros and cons I'm gonna talk about and some other key things I'm gonna share with you here in a second. But think about running through that process and then you'll be much more confident going into that meeting. The next thing you wanna do in your proposals when you actually get them on video and you're in the proposal process, you need to illustrate how much you met their needs. If they told you that they have a child with autism and it's important that they have a kids club that understands uh, the needs of that particular child, make sure you bring that up in the process. Hey, I contacted them, they do have a certified individuals and this is their process and let them know how their child is going to be made comfortable and have a wonderful trip. So doing those, th bringing up those things that you discovered in the consultation process and repeating it back to them in the proposal process is very key. It tells your client that you're proposing the, the proposal to that you heard them, that you're responding, and you're letting them know how you are meeting that need for them. That's so important. So many people go, oh, here's a resort and here's a price, do you want it? Like, that's not a proposal. So walking them through each step of illustrating what it needs, or maybe they wanted to see sunsets on their honeymoon, so you can point out the fact that you put them on the west side of Maui at this particular resort, and every night they have beautiful sunsets. In fact, not only do they have beautiful sunsets, they have actually a tiki ceremony a ceremony where they go around and they blow the horn and they have uh, uh, you know the lighting of the torches so you want to exemplify those things that they told you that were important and show how you're delivering on that requested thing the other thing that you can do in your sales process is something that you'll learn in sales called mirroring 
So I've been so fortunate in my career. I worked for really big travel companies starting when I was 19 years old, and I had the advantage of going through top tier sales training through my career as a travel agent. And this is one thing that is in every, like I've taken dozens of sales you know, programs, but mirroring is something that you hear about all the time. And I really, I was a great salesperson kind of naturally jumping in, but one of the things I had to learn was better mirroring because I have a tendency to talk really fast. You probably noticed that on the video, right? Sometimes I watch my videos back and go, I need to slow down a little bit. So here's what would happen with me. When I worked the morning shift, because we had clients from all over the country, and I dealt with people from the East Coast, I would sell people from the East Coast super fast, super fast. But then as the day went along and then the California calls started coming in or the calls from the South, I had a lady tell me once, I think she was from Texas, she's like, honey, you are talking entirely too fast. I'm gonna need you to slow down. <laughs> and I was like, oh no, my sales trainer kicked it. I need to mirror. Whatever pace that they talk at, tempo-wise, try to match that. If they're fast-paced and you talk fast, that's great. You guys are gonna be connecting, you're gonna be vibing. But notice if someone it talks a little bit uh, slower and that's their natural rhythm try to meet their pace because it makes them more comfortable with you It makes them hear the information that you're delivering better and it just makes your client more comfortable the other thing with um Mirroring that's another good tactic is use the same words that they use if they say um, They want um, let me think of an example of this if they want a, a large car You might go to go. Oh, this is a midsize or this is a full size So when you're talking about oh what I put I have a large car arranged for you It's classified as a full size with Avis, but it should be large enough It has it holds this many suitcases and this many pa passengers just using the word large because that's what they asked for well again Again, show them that you met that need so it's little things like that in the art of sales that is so important the practice it if you have the opportunity to record your calls and zoom actually if you were if you use zoom that's a great one everyone's using new zoom these days for recording and all of those things you, if you ask your client if you can record the call so they can have a copy of the proposal you also can watch it back and say what could I have done better self-assessment is a really powerful tool in the sales process um, um, the other thing that you want to do in sales is you want to paint a picture for them. So don't just say, yep, this is the resort. I know you said that you like Hyatt's. It's a Hyatt. Uh, let me know what you guys think. There's two beds in the room. Like that's not painting a picture. You want to say, oh, what I love about the Hyatt in Maui is you walk in, you've been on this long plane ride, you walk in after you check in, it's an open air lobby and the breezes are coming in from the ocean and they actually have wildlife right there in these little areas and you walk through, it's just like a dream. And then they have this little veranda you can walk out and just see a panoramic view of the ocean. They have a beautiful sushi restaurant right there. I know you mentioned that you love sushi and it's just gorgeous. And because you guys are in an ocean front room, you'll be able to open your slider door and listen to the ocean as you sleep every single night do you see how that verbiage feels different you took them to Maui for a second you took them on vacation in their minds they can almost taste that beautiful honeymoon that you're putting together for them so painting a picture from them is for them is really important so think about that so if, if I know you might say well Cindy I've never been to that resort well that's fine you can still do research and paint a picture with the information that you learn if you've been there even better um, the other thing that you want to do is anticipate and overcome objections. People get so freaked out by objections. Objections are actually a good thing. That's a buying signal that people are interested enough to ask a question. They're just figuring out if that last thing you can fix for them, or can we get a flight that has a little bit less of a connection, or do they have any non-stops, or whatever the, case, whatever the objection is, you need to anticipate those. Don't get freaked out by objections. It doesn't mean they don't like you. It doesn't mean they don't like what you're proposing. It just means they're asking for more attention on tweaking that one part of the trip. And even if you say, you know what, that's a great question. Let me do some more research on it and I'll have an answer for you by two o'clock today and then we can re-meet up and uh, go forward. Does that sound good? So it's kind of one of those things where take control of that situation or maybe you, if you know the answer even better, you can overcome it there and keep the conversation moving along and go for the close. So in the proposal process, those are my top components that you need to have in every sales proposal to help match people 
with their vacation. Now let's talk about that moment, the moment of how do you close the vacation, right? If you've ever been in any sales training ever, you've probably heard ABC, always be closing. There's different methods for closing and there's four top methods that are generally accepted across all industries for sales and it's no exception for our industry. So the first one in my favorite is the assumptive. Just you're assuming like you, they called you to book the vacation. You got it within their budget. You delivered what they wanted. So what address do you want the magic bands delivered to? What address do you want me to send the travel documents to? So it's kind of like you don't even ask, is this okay? Do you like that? You just move right into great. So uh, seems like this is an awesome match. Where do you guys want me to deliver everything in terms of your documents? And boom, you're moving in, then you're moving into, okay, I'm giving you the address, great, what credit card do you want the deposit on? Then it's easier roll into asking for the credit card. The second type outside of the assumptive is the choice close. This is probably my second favorite um, for those people that have like a ton of questions or they're very pragmatic personality and they're very detail oriented. You're you're uh, seemingly giving them the power in the sales process by giving them a choice. So you get down to that moment where you're closing, you can say, well, great, well, Cindy, so we have a couple of great options for you. We went through the ocean front room pricing and the pool view pricing. You know, either way, it's a gorgeous resort. Which one is best for you? Do you want the ocean front or the pool view? So you're asking them, you're still asking them to make a decision, but you're giving them the power to go to your ocean front or pool view. Either way, it's still gonna, whoops, either way, it's still gonna equal getting that credit card, right? So that's the choice close and that's my other favorite. The suggestion close, uh, is the next type of close that you can do. And this is what a lot of people use or start with until they get comfortable trying an assumptive close or trying a choice close. And that's the other thing, as I go through these four different types, I want you guys to think about trying some of these different ones. If you haven't tried these other ones before, you need to start testing that and see which ones give you the best results and which ones work the best for you. So the suggestion close is really based on what you shared with them. Um, so in the, in the, for example, if they're doing a Disney trip, based on what you shared with me, Mrs. Jones, the convenience of being at one of the monorail ho hotels where you're a ride away from the Magic Kingdom, I really think the Grand Floridian is the best fit. You mentioned just loving that whole Floridian vibe and you know this being a once in a lifetime Disney vacation. Um, I really feel like the Grand Floridian is gonna be the optimum choice for you. It's gonna meet all your needs. Does that sound good? So I don't love a yes or no in a closed process, but that's how the suggestion one works. You have to kind of curtail it and tell them why you're suggesting that in your professional opinion, and then you ask them to make a decision. So that's your suggestion close if that feels like it resonates better with you. The other one is the urgency close. In our, in our industry, guys, things change by the hour. Airfare can go up, rooms can sell out. Like after 2020 with all the change like there's so many things that can change so an urgency close is actually really effective and a truthful way to close in our industry if someone doesn't close on the spot i always tell them mrs jones i cannot guarantee this after we get off the phone because stuff changes by the hour so let me give you an example of some verbiage from an from an urgency close space is changing uh, by the hour because it's such a popular time that you've requested to go i literally had another client last week who in a matter of hours their vacation went up hundreds of dollars per person so since it's only a deposit and it's refundable and with this particular resort I really recommend that you lock in your rates. So let's go ahead and do that if that works for you. So that's an urgency close where you're going, look, I if I get a deposit, I can promise you that rate and you can still cancel it. Like what's the downside of that? But on the, and I just wanna, let me preface that by saying, not all deposits are refundable. I'm assuming this is operating under one of the ones that are refundable today. We're still amidst COVID right now. So there's so many that are offering refundable deposits and things like that. You need to check that before you put it into your sales pitch. Or you could say, if it's not a refundable deposit, you can say for a small deposit, you know you're going to be able to lock that in um, and go from there. So that's your urgency close. So think about those different types of close closes. The assumptive close, the choice close, the suggestion close and the urgency close think about which one 
resonates for you and I also want you to try to test some different ones and see where you're gonna have a better result when I was new in sales when I was like 1920 I was so enthusiastic about the industry I just asked for the credit card on every single call what credit card do you want? I'm like they called me for a I, like I was so naive I just assumed that credit card every time and like, when I came out they're like this new girl's doing so good like within a year I had my first million dollars in sales as a travel agent part of it you guys was just because I was like so naive to the fact like why wouldn't someone go on a vacation vacations are awesome so but as I s grew my craft and learned more about sales with some clients I would use the choice clothes with some I would use the assumptive and with, with some I would use a suggestion uh, and almost all of them I would tie in the urgency somehow because that you can layer the urgency in as you go as well so you'll get better at it but it requires practice so keep working at that um, now I talked about earlier we we're gonna share how to make more money on every sale you guys have already done the work of preparing this beautiful quote, getting it ready. There's really easy ways you can up the ticket price of every sale and enhance your client's vacation at the same time. The first one, and is so relevant, and to, I've been doing this forever, but after 2020, you need to be doing this. Like it's, in my opinion, it's a liability if you're not doing it, and that is adding insurance to every single quote. Make them tell you they don't want the insurance, okay? Quote it with the insurance and say, this includes insurance, that way if something happens, you know, and every, depending on which insurance provider you're dealing with, you can give them the policy, but I quoted every single vacation with insurance, and if they don't want it, then we have a form that they have to fill out so they can take the insurance off but quote it with insurance and then you know especially just referring back to 2020 is all you need to do and most people are gonna take your professional opinion and get that insurance which you also make commission on and it ups your ticket price and trust me it's the best thing for your client I can't tell you how many times clients have gone oh I'm gonna leave that extra two or three hundred dollars off and then I get a call and they're like oh my husband's got food poisoning he's in the ER we're supposed to go to Mexico tomorrow and I'll go remind me did you take the insurance because I know I quoted on every single one they'll go no I didn't I'll go oh my gosh I'm so sorry you know so what do you it's it's bad the onus is back on them at that point so quote it with insurance the second thing you should always do is show them an option above their budget. At least one option. If they tell you their budget is 5,000, show them one for 6,000. And the way that you can preface that is you can say, Cindy, I know you mentioned this is gonna be the one time you go to Bali probably in your life. And I, you know, in I didn't want to disservice you by letting you know that right now you can do this particular suite that is an over the hut bungalow I know it's above your budget but I would feel bad if you came back later and said I didn't know I could if we saved a little bit more I could get that over the water bungalow because it's such a difference in the amazing experience you would have when you when you're gonna be in Bali so whatever the thing is always give them that one option and watch how many times they're not gonna take it all the time but I would say in at least 30 30 to 35 percent of the times that I do that they're like oh you know what let's do it let's do it I don't have to pay the final until this date I have more time to save let's do it so you want to always bring in one more option that's just gonna knock their socks off and say look no hard feelings if you don't want to do this one we can still work within your budget but I would feel bad if I didn't tell you about this right the last thing you, the way that you can up your ticket and earn more commission is add-ons so are you adding the rental car? Are you doing tours? Are you doing uh, concierge type services? So different things that you can add into the vacation. Um, you know, like at Universal, they have VIP tours. Um, Disney has VIP tours too. When you go to the resort, sometimes they'll have dolphin tours or they'll have uh, whale watching tours in Hawaii. There's different things that you can add through different travel suppliers because they're gonna book that stuff anyway. So if you take the extra step of adding some of those things on, a luau in Hawaii, right? Who doesn't do a luau when they're going to Hawaii one time? you can actually earn commission for those things. So think about that in terms of the same vacation, the same client, closing the same sale, but increasing your ticket, which means you're gonna make more money and more commission. All right, making the sales process easier. And these are kind of like some quick notes. 
couple things you can do to make the sales process easier. One, you have to qualify clients. I know we didn't go into that today. I'm assuming you know how to qualify clients. That's so important so you're not wasting your time as a professional. In this industry, you don't get your big payment until they go on vacation or until that final payment is made. So you wanna make sure you're qualifying people really well. The second thing is remember to take that consultative approach. Sales doesn't have to feel yucky or sleazy or if you basically think of it like you're making a new friend, they're asking you to book a vacation, you're gonna to put together a vacation of their dreams, keep that enthusiasm high, meet their needs, convert it into a sale. Think about charging planning fees. This is something we teach all the time in our Cruise on Vacation Mastermind, how to introduce fees so you're not wasting your time and also like a year like COVID, right? Last year when we had a bunch of vacations that fell off the books, we still had our planning fees so it's not like our agents didn't get paid anything, they at least got to retain those fees and things Things like that so um, those are more and more important as we move forward in the industry so make sure you're considering that and then the number one thing that you can do to make the sales process easier is position yourself as an expert if you don't know how to position yourself as an expert um, the <sighs> this is one of those things like it's this is, makes the process so much easier when i you know went from taking calls and i have you know 25 years of experience having that initial conversation of why do i work with you now versus the next person so learning how to in your branding and your marketing and your sales funnels and a video strategy how you can position yourself as an expert then people get on the phone and go oh my gosh i'm so excited to work with you i already know all about you that is a totally different experience than cold calls or people are like, who are you or what do you do or what can you offer me? And all of a sudden you feel like, why do I have to prove myself to people, right? So expert positioning is so key to make sales just kind of happen like easy, easy, easy. So guys, if these are things that um, you are struggling with or you know closing more sales can really help you or if you know expert positioning would help you so much to convert those sales and have that difference in client getting on your phone, I want you to consider applying for our Careers on Vacation Mastermind. These are the things that we help you with, not just sales, but also marketing, best practices, automation, how to really make your travel agency as abundant as possible using real proven techniques that I use and have had in my agency for years and years and years and that we have taught hundreds of agencies how to do across the board. So go to careersonvacation.com forward slash ready now if you'd like to apply for the mastermind and to work with me and my team directly. If you haven't heard of Careers on Vacation before, it's an ASTA affiliated, ASTA is the American Society of Travel Advisors. We're ASTA affiliated. You get access to my team of experts that has grown my travel agency from six figures a year to six figures a month. And we have a self-paced curriculum and hands-on support. We have 100 plus case studies of our graduates who've been through the program right here on YouTube, so definitely check those out. So if I resonate with you and you're looking for something a little bit more, we definitely encourage you to check out careersonvacation.com. And guys, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell so you get all of our new free content that comes out every single week. I love you so much. I wish you so much love, so much abundance in this new year. I wish you the world. I'll see you next week. here if you like that last video make sure you check out my other content to help you grow and scale your very own travel business and also I invite you to travel around the world with me and find out what I'm doing in my portable profitable award-winning travel business check out the videos